So there is a law all around us. So find the law. Is it the law of prayer? Find the law of prayer. The law that governs prayer. Is it the law of consecration? Find the law of consecration. Is it the law of intercession? There is a law of intercession. There is a way to intercede. There is a way to see in the spiritual realm. There is a way to see in the spiritual realm. Do you know there is a law called the law of quietness? There are so many laws. Are you aware? Do you know that you can enter to another dimension of spirituality by being quiet? It's weird. Do you know that sometimes after you are done praying and you talk too much, you feel energy leave your body? Have you, have you noticed before? After you have prayed and then you start... Now, I'm not saying talking about the scripture. When you're talking about the scripture, energy doesn't leave your body. It just it, it's kind of builds up more, wails more inside of you. And the more you talk about scripture after prayer, the more you know more. What you don't understand is that after praying and you're talking about scripture, what you are speaking is life. Whoever that listens to you after you have done praying and you're talking about scripture, most of the things you tell that person will retain in their body. It will, sorry, will retain in their soul. It might not have effect that day, but in years to come, everything you've said will have effect in their life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and alive. Naturally, every word is a spirit and is alive. But there is a word that comes from prayer. So sometimes, when you are done praying for like one hour, two hours, just stay quiet. Somehow, I don't know how to explain it, you will sense in the spirit that energy is conserved. Do you know that sometimes after praying, you begin to watch movie, you feel energy leave your body from... Are you aware? And do you know that you can watch a particular movie like if you watch some of the movies of the Winlows, uh, Mountain Zion, some of the Christian movies, you watch them, you feel energy come to you. I was watching one movie by the Windows. It was a short clip that they did. The story was very powerful. And while I was watching, I began to pray in tongues. I prayed for like an hour to two hours. I remember the day I was watching a movie by Mountain Zion. I had to pray throughout. In fact, I watched a movie called Shackles. Or Shackles. Shackles. Yeah, Shackles. I watched a movie called Shackles Part 1 and Part 2. I prayed in tongues throughout the whole movie of Shackles. It's about two hours, so one hour, something minutes. I prayed in tongues from the beginning. As the movie started, I prayed in tongue till the very end. I was not doing pausing and waiting. Now, if I want to stop, I pause, do what I want to do, come back. But I prayed in tongue throughout the whole movie. But I can't be watching an American movie and I'm praying in tongues. It, the, the, the ventilation, I can't even find the strength to do that. So there are some, if you, a spirit encounters a spirit, the spirit sharpens the spirit. If you encounter your likeness, it sharpens you. You can be watching a, just a normal Nollywood movie and now, Noli Mo, some of this Nigerian movie you work, we watch in epic movies, in epic TV. I don't, is it epic they call it? DSTV, epic stuff. They, 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 they reduce your level of reasoning. I just want to help you. Watch things that provokes your spirit. I want to guarantee you, if you make it a must, that from today, the only movies you watch will be from Mount Zion and the Windows, and, may, and, and maybe probably Amplify TV, that amplifier guy, uh, Professor Silas, if you make it a compulsory thing that these are the people you'll be watching a movie and some other Christian, there are many Christian uh, movies there. So I don't know all of them. Um, I think there is the one called, I can't remember their names all. But if you make it a compulsory that that is the only movie you watch, I guarantee you, even without praying, if you do that for two days, you will notice something has happened in your spirit life. In fact, it's nearly impossible to watch those movies without praying. In fact, it's important. Now, except you are a different kind of being. But I think it's impossible to watch a movie, a full series of movies, by Mountain Zion movies and not pray in tongues. There is something about their movies. I feel like after they are done shooting movies, they keep it intercessors pray over the movies. You will pray. You will pray. So, what you watch can actually, what you watch is a law you're obeying. It can actually take what you have built in the, spirit, in the spiritual realm out of you, or it can build you to pray more. You need movies that can help you like that. Sounds can take from you or give to you. I, I, I went for a program and I was lodged in a place. In that place, by the window, is the hotel. These people, the hotel I'm in is playing their own sound. The one at my window is playing my own side. So I couldn't study. So I was praying throughout. Why I was praying was because I was trying to bounce the noise. So even when I closed the window, it was still loud. So I was praying in tongues praying in tongues, I'm, bounce, I'm playing around with the sound. And I have this policy, when you invite me to a place, and you lodge me in the hotel, I don't leave my hotel room. I don't leave my hotel What am I going to look for? I'll stay in the hotel room. You invited me, I'm staying there. Except there's a place you say, man of God, come, let's show you a place, I'll follow you. Apart from that, I stay in the door. 
So I was praying in tongues. Two hours, three hours, I was still praying in tongues. I couldn't study. I brought the book to read because I read so much with my mind because I like to understand. And if I see a word, I go deep to understand what the word is saying. So it was so much. I had to test mommy. I said, please, they're where I am. I can't study. Please help me pray, even if it's for 30 minutes. I'm still praying, but just join me in prayer. Mommy told me, he said, okay, when am I missing? He said, whenever, that I, I told you I'm going to miss you some hours later. He said, she will pray for me till that hour. So when I was praying, I couldn't study. I was just praying. And I went there. When I was going, the Lord said, he said, I think it was God that allowed that set up. I think he wanted me to pray more. And he told me from the beginning, he said, when you get there, deliverance. Cast demons out. And when we got there, Jesus. Jesus. The power of God was just demons we are shouting people we are being impacted heavily and massively all right so but you saw there was a law i was obeying the devil was trying to deposit something inside of me so i had to apply the law of prayer so as i was praying my spirit could not trap anything because whenever you begin to pray there is a wall of fire around you and there is a shield around you so those shield was helping my mind not to connect to that sound you see some of this sound you hear some of you that like you sleep and you wake up you wake up with a worldly song in your heart there's a problem with your heart though just wake up and a love song they sing and it's not a Christian song, it's a worldly song. <laughs> Let's be honest. Which love song come your heart now? Talk and talk and talk. Some of you in a peace square enter your heart now. You know, you don't like, you know, if it's Bible class, you will raise up hand. We will find you. All right? It's a law. And there is a law that if you study the Bible before you go to bed, there is a law that says that, like, let me say, 80% of the time, if you study the scripture before you go to bed, before a moon, before one week, you have an encounter. Yes, it's a law. There is, there is a law that governs that. That's why the Bible said, meditate on the word of God day and night. But many of us, we don't meditate on the word of God. We pray morning and night, but we don't meditate on the word. Stay on the word. And I want to assure you that for those of you that are asking me a question, man, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, principles of the law of finances. The law of finances is given. There is no man on this earth that ever touched wealth that never gave and is not given. The moment you stop giving, you come back to your system of brokenness. It's impossible. Yes, oh, you have an uncle that doesn't give you money. It is you he doesn't give. It's not others. Even in the dark kingdom, the principle of wealth is given. Onyenye, nyanye. That's the principle. Is a principle. They, they, in the occult system, they might tell you not to give to your family, but you must give. And those ones are not just Nigerian movies. These things are facts. If you have encountered native doctors, they will tell you these things. It's a principle. They don't mind coming to a church and buying everybody bags of rice. It's a principle. They have to obey a principle. They might not want to give you, but the principle warrant, the law that governs giving warrant, the law that governs prosperity, wealth warrant that you give, is a principle. You must obey it. The law that governs spiritual growth. There are many laws that govern spiritual growth. But the law that governs understanding is to teach. If you don't teach, you will not understand. If you only hear and you don't teach, you will not understand. Your understanding will be limited. It's in teaching that understanding is given much more. That's a law. The law of prayer is that before you, ascend, before you assess the prayer room, your heart must be treated. If you don't treat yourself and you enter the prayer room, you can still be wounded in the prayer room. Yes, that's the law. There's a law of warfare. There's a spiritual law of warfare. You cannot be having a spiritual law of warfare and have anger in your heart. It doesn't work that way. You cannot engage in a spiritual warfare and you are keeping malice. It's a, you will injure yourself. There's a loophole and the devil will attack that loophole. There's a law of purity. The law of purity does not state that it's not just the physical purity, it's the purity of the heart. Purity starts from within. Instead, if the inside of the cup is clean, then the outside too will be clean. The, hip, the Pharisees, they were more concerned about the outside appearance and not the inward appearance. And the Lord called them hypocrites. There is a law of marriage. If you have good character, they go marry you. If you have good character, they go. So people will say, but I have good character, nobody marry me. There are village people who apply the law of prayer. Sometimes it's not your time. It's not your turn to settle down. Sometimes it's not your turn. Now that boils down to who is God? The Bible said that God is the father of all spirits. Do you know that God is not a human being? 
God is not a human being. God is a spirit. The Bible, Jesus Christ said, God is a spirit. And those who will serve him will serve him in truth and in spirit. Or in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit. God dwells in the spirit. And you can't see God with your eyes. The only version of God, the, of God you can see with your eye is the one of Jesus Christ. But God is a spirit. And in that spirit, he dwells in a light. And that light is unapproachable. It dwells in the depth of light. Which means that if you want to gaze through the light to see him, you can become blind. The depth, the depthness of God is so deep. In fact, I want to tell you something. I don't know if you agree, oh, but just hear me. Even though the angels are around the Lord, they don't still see him. Are you buying what I'm selling now? What they see is light on the throne. What looks like. If you see whenever they are describing God, they say, what looks like. Because they don't know how to describe him. But he dwells in unapproachable light. So when the angels are around the throne, what they are seeing is light. Inside that light, he dwells inside of it. And he speaks from the light. The only one that I've seen the father is the son. The one who is equal with the father. You get it. He dwells in unapproachable light. Not just to human, but even to spirit. He is the father of all spirits. You can't see him with your naked eyes. If you have to see God with your naked eyes, which is called open vision, one of the, one of the things the Lord does is that the Lord makes you more of a spirit than a human to see him. Which means that the human nature shuts down and your spiritual eyes comes in front and you become like Adam, the living soul, where you begin to gaze from your spiritual nature. Because you can switch in between the spiritual nature and the physical nature. This is, this is a law. I know how to do it. I do it at times. You can switch. You can switch. Even now you can switch. If you begin to pray in tongues and you are so distracted, you can't switch. Your spirit begins to pray, but you are not able to switch in the spirit. But if you quiet yourself and you begin to pray, you will notice when the switch happens. Once the switch happens, your body falls in and then the spirit man comes out. And that moment, if you begin to speak, you speak like a deity. Your words begin to carry so much fire because you no longer talk like a human being. You see yourself do more of commanding and giving instructions. I command that the powers that be that did this, that's when you have switched to the spirit. When the spirit shuts down, you come back to your human senses and then you begin to say, thank you, Jesus. That is the human senses. But you can switch. Because the essence of you having a spirit is to be able to assess the spiritual realm. And the only way you can find God is in the spiritual realm. So while you are seated, while you are listening to me right now, you can switch. And as a matter of fact, sometimes when I preach to you, I don't speak to your body, I speak to your spirit. And in most cases, what I'm doing is that I'm using my spirit to speak to your spirit. And then your spirit begins to convey the message I'm saying to your soul. Because your spirit is what bears witness. So every time I'm speaking to you, you are testing me. Every time you hear what I'm saying, you are testing me. Every time I'm talking to you, you are testing me. It's when you test me, then you believe that what the man of God is saying is true. Then you accept it and you transfer it to your soul to accept it. Once your soul accepts it, your body must confirm to it. But whatever I speak to you, your spirit does not accept. Your soul cannot believe it. Then some of you, when you come to Bible class, you now raise the question. When I explain it, you're like, ah, that is when your soul accepts it. Because everything that I say to you must go through your spirit because I'm speaking from spirit, which is life to you. Your soul cannot understand what I'm saying. Your soul is incapable of knowing what I'm saying. Your soul does not understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is not English. You are the one that thinks it's English. What I'm speaking is life. I'm not speaking English. English is only meant for your soul. Understanding is given to your spirit. Are you with me? Hmm. So I, I went to a program, and while I was in the program, I said, there's the Daniel. Where's the Daniel? There's a Daniel. I said, there's a Daniel that is coming, you're a minister, and blah, 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 blah. And there was no Daniel in the church. I said, please, tomorrow we'll see a Daniel. Tomorrow we'll, we'll let's find. And I came to the church, and when we are done, somebody came and said, I'm Daniel. I came from one place like that. I said, you're a minister? I said, yes. How, how was it that I came in the program, a Daniel has not come, but the guy had it in mind to come that day, but I picked him in the spirit. Because in the spiritual realm, he's meant to be there. 
So even though he was not physically there because of some circumstances, his spirit was with me. Do you remember the day I came to the church and somebody walked in? And before the person walked in, I wrote a prophecy about the person. And when the person walked in, I gave you the prophecy. You saw that I said that the person will be wearing a suit and he will be sitting beside the speaker. Because even before you came now, you have already been here. You just that you didn't know. There are some people that are meant to be here, but they refuse to obey the law of the spirit that leads them to be here. And because of that, they stayed at home. And the message that is meant to program their life for the next five years, they will miss it. It's a law in the spirit. But one thing about God is that God will also make another way for them to encounter. Is either God will lead them to another vigil or a particular place to go. And when they go to that place, that message will be passed. Do you know that right now, as I'm speaking to you now, in the whole church, in the whole world, we are preaching the same thing. Every man that is genuine from God is preaching the same thing. They might be preaching on giving, preaching on testimony, preaching on this. But if you listen to the preaching, you see that everything I'm saying connotes. I'm talking about law. They are, them, they are explaining the laws. It's one spirit. He just speaks in different ways. If you think I'm joking, when we are done now, go and listen to that David Oboeli message, go and listen to that the Aaron Messiah message, go and listen to whatever message that is preached today of a man that is genuine. You, you see that the message collodes. It's the same thing. Because the spirit that casts burdens to us to speak. It might not be the exact thing I'm saying from word for word, but you find something tied to it. Let me teach you this for ministers. There is a gauge when you pray that is in your spirit. And when you are teaching, some of you might, if you're a minister, some of you might have a story I'm saying. There's a, a way you would teach when you are done teaching, there's no energy for manifestation again. Do I have witnesses? Yes. And then there's a way you would teach, you keep your teaching halfway. Use the remaining half for manifestations. If you teach it all, you might not have the one for manifestation. And then you just bless people. So that's why if you teach, you must know the reservoir of where to stop. I want us to pray. Teach me your laws. Teach me your ways. Teach me the patterns that governs you. Teach me your ways. Teach me your laws. Teach me the patterns that governs. into that grace and the gift of the sentiment of the spirit. Sing Adonai